Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out this evening to Briz Science. Um, I am not Dr. Joel Gilmore, uh, our wonderful host for this evening. I'm so, so sorry. I know. It really is a disappointment to me as well. Um, <laughs> thank you for coming out tonight. Briz Science is our amazing monthly lecture series where we feature uh, the best and brightest scientists from the University of Queensland that live here in Brisbane. Um, this year we've seen some amazing, uh, some amazing folks. We've seen uh, folks talk about AI, dark matter, uh, whether fungi will be the last of us, um, and stem cells repairing brains. So it's been a bit of a mix. Um, my name's Dominic Jarvis, I'm one of the main coordinators here. Um, and it's a pleasure to have these excellent talks, but it's a bigger pleasure to have you all here with us. Uh, who make the journey out on often cold and rainy nights to see uh, some of the most amazing discoveries in the world that are happening right at our doorstep. Um, I'd like to kick off tonight with an acknowledgement of country, um, and I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the, the land on which we're meeting here tonight and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Um, and I'd like to let you know there will be food afterwards as well as many of our... Uh <laughs> Um, as many of our, our um, participants know, um, please go easy this evening. There's a lot of people in the room, which is wonderful. Um, but just have a bit of patience and we'll all get you fed with some yummies. Um, I was talking to Joel just before coming up here, and he is forever the scientist. And he uh, wanted me to test the audience this evening. So to get started, um, I'd really like to just calibrate our audience tonight. Um, can we give a little round of applause, just a soft round of applause, like your child has uh, just shown you their artwork on their wall that they've done in pen. Can we give one of those really soft? A golf clap. <laughs> golf clap? That's pretty good, guys. Okay. So I want you to go a little bit harder now. We're going to um, shift up a gear. I want you to clap as if your favourite TV show has just been renewed on television. Yeah, pretty good. Fantastic. All right, now let's say you get a phone call out of the blue and you've been told you've got a, uh, a free ticket to the International Space Station. How do we feel about that? Yeah. That's the energy. Okay, fantastic. Could you please join me with that level of energy to welcome the one, the only, Dr. Joel Gilmore. Thank you very much. talking about yes good energy yes wow the control oh got chills thank you so much for coming out tonight this is the night where we take a lighter look at some of the big science stories of the year and some of the quirkier ones too in a moment we are going to bring out our incredible amazing panelists but first let's look at some of the headlines and the other slide deck not that one. That's, oh God, that's big. Yes, oh no, they're at it again, no. All right. Yes, setting the scene for this year and showing that we have learned nothing from decades of science fiction. S scientists have resurrected a 46,000 year old tiny worm found frozen in the Siberian permafrost. Mm hmm Raising concerns about what might happen as this permafrost melts and pathogens are released onto the world. Now, this 46,000-year-old worm normally only lives for one month, meaning it looks very good for its age. <laughs> Bit like Rupert Murdoch. And since being thawed, it has already started reproducing with over 100 generations of baby clones. A bit like Rupert Murdoch. <laughs> Scientists were initially worried about the risk of unleashing an ancient organism on modern humanity. However, in a press conference last week, scientists now say everything is fine and the worm just wants to be our friend. <laughs> and to prove it, the worm is inviting all world leaders to the lab in Siberia to see for themselves. <laughs> While hilarious, <laughs> the threat of ancient species coming back to life is an increasingly serious concern because of climate change. Yes, 2023 saw the temperatures rise yet again. Again, 
2023 saw the hottest September on record, the lowest Antarctic sea ice on record, and the most exhausted scientists on record. Uh, the question is what to do about it. On the one hand, renewable energy supplied 40% of our electricity this year, with at one point South Australia being supplied entirely from rooftop solar alone. On the other hand, Peter Dutton says that scientists are out of touch and what Australia really needs is nuclear power. Peter Dutton explained that this would be more expensive, highly inflexible and would take decades to develop. No, no, that's... <laughs> Mathematicians have also been doing important research, setting the scene for the human condition going forwards. A recent study has discovered that thousands of people every day cheat at Wordle. <laughs> the online word guessing game. Yes, up to 10,000 people a day guess the word right on their very first guess. Something even more unlikely than scoring tickets to Taylor Swift. <laughs> Scientists are at a loss to explain why people would cheat like that. However, not everybody's remaining silent. With Wordle now owned by the New York Times, Donald Trump launched a scathing attack on the mainstream media, saying he'd never even heard of half the words that Wordle uses. <laughs> words like taxes, <laughs> truth, and prison. <laughs> which, which is longer than five letters, but you can still use it in a sentence. Um, this year had some good stories too. January kicked off with what was described as a record search for a radioactive needle in a haystack. And I'm not talking about the Qantas Code of Ethics. <laughs> this tiny capsule used in mining was lost in the Western Australian outback on a 1400 kilometre road when it fell off the back of a truck which coincidentally is apparently where Rio Tinto gets their equipment. <laughs> Amazingly, but fortunately, a brilliant team of scientists and engineers discovered the capsule just four days later, and it was allowed back into Perth, despite calls by Mark McGowan to close the border. <laughs> At the federal level, Peter Dutton says that scientists are out of touch, and what Australia really needs is nuclear power, citing our impressive record of nuclear safety. Psychology, a little bit of psychology and business. Learning how we think about trustworthiness and competency in an online world, scientists have discovered that you give a better first impression on a Zoom call if you have books in your background <laughs> rather than a living room or novelty pictures of animals. <laughs> You're also judged as more competent if you smile. Uh, but further studies will be needed on exactly what books should be used in the background. For example, in hindsight, using the box set of Twilight was a poor choice for the president of Red Cross. <laughs> Meanwhile, Peter Dutton says that scientists are out of touch. <laughs> and what Australians really need in their background is nuclear power, saying he'd never be caught dead with a book. Finally, all good things must come to an end. Last month, NASA requested bids for the destruction of the International Space Station ahead of its last trip around the Earth in 2031. At that point, the station will be over 40 years old, which, as we all know, is the beginning of the end. NASA is seeking private companies to help deorbit the space station so that it burns up in our atmosphere. The front runner at the moment is Elon Musk, given his experience in both rockets and spending billions of dollars to destroy other people's projects. <laughs> but we joke, but Elon Musk's, Elon Musk's staff actually love him. Why just this year? every single staff member chipped in to buy him a once-in-a-lifetime gift, a submarine visit to the Titanic. 
And on that note, let's bring out our amazing panelists. <laughs> y yep, yep, that was your cue. Let's try it again. Yes, there we go. Look at those amazing panelists. All right, all right. Let's get straight into this. We've got two incredible teams tonight who are competing for glory and exactly zero prizes. <laughs> Budget's tough in academia these days. Um, tonight, we have a researcher from the Queensland Brain Institute who has previously also written shows, comedy shows, for Disney+, Plus, but is contractually obligated tonight to say that Bruce Science is the highlight of his career. Please welcome Mia Shadwadia. Joining him is a biochemist and an expert on things that live in your body. Everything from gut microbes to babies. <laughs> Working to improve pregnancy outcomes for mothers and babies, please welcome Associate Professor Marlus Dekanitert. <laughs> and returning after a, a long absence yes. from our stage, it is the brilliant science communicator, educator, and gorgeous half of the amazing podcasting duo, Smart Enough to Know Better. Please welcome Greg Wah! Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. what are you working on at QBI? I look at tiny microscopic worms, uh, cut their neurons, and see if they regrow. Um, because one of our biggest tasks in neurobiology is that we have neurodegenerative diseases where the neurons don't grow. So we're using these worms, which have a capacity to regrow their neurons, to see how we can do that. Do you remember the opening bit where we're talking about <laughs> science fiction novels and how these things go wrong? Uh, <laughs> the worm that was in the Siberian permafrost that Joel spoke about, that is also the same kind of worm that I look at. Oh. <laughs> Our lab currently has frozen worms for the last 18 years, so in 42,000 years, I'll let you know if that science was valid. <laughs> Fantastic, we've got some long-term projects. Rival the pitch drop in the physics lab. You'll have the frozen worms. Uh, fantastic. <laughs> Malus, tell me about what you're working on and, and the role of gut microbes and pregnancy and all these interactions. So, um, the, um, well, that's, that's a very big question for uh, like a very short amount of time. But You've I got 60 seconds. 60 seconds, great. Uh, so what I work on is to, to, to see if there is a connection between the bugs that we have in our gut and uh, the way we grow babies or how it helps to grow healthy babies or not. Fantastic. Um, why, why is there that interest? Because our microbes actually do seem to play a surprising role in all these different areas of our body, don't they? They do, and they, 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 they send out these, these little molecules that go everywhere. So even to the brain, not sure whether they grow neurons, but who knows? <laughs> all right, so I'm certainly not going to sleep well tonight, but um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that. Fantastic. And finally, Greg, great to have you back. What have you been up to for the last few years? Well, I've always been obsessed with space, so that's all I'm going to say about that. I've been somewhere else for a while, and uh, <laughs> can't really talk much more about that now. But uh, I'm a science communicator. I work for CSIRO at this point in time, and I like working uh, with students to increase their chances of getting STEM careers uh, from any sort of background. That's uh, sort of my area. Uh, and as I said, I'm, sort of, I'm, a little, I'm a little bit obsessed with space, like a lot. We feel like we've, we've done you a disservice by bringing any other astronomers you can geek out with tonight. So you're going to be after to be our space champion. Yes! <laughs> we're, we're all set. All right, so there we have our first team. Can I give one more round of applause? <laughs> and tonight they will be facing off against a mathematician specialising in rare events, from extreme weather to actually speaking to somebody at Qantas customer service. <laughs> Please welcome Dr. Megan Carney. <laughs> Joining her is an expert on snakes, from their ecology to their venoms, which makes me very nervous if their team doesn't win tonight. Please welcome Dr. Christina Zedenek.
and rounding it out, and the other dashing half of the Smart Enough to Know Better podcast, it is the team captain, comedian, playwright, and more, Dan Beeston. <laughs> Megan, what got you into modelling extreme events? What, why, did you, why is that your area of interest? Okay, I'm just trying to smile a lot so everyone thinks I'm competent. <laughs> <laughs> we need some books. Can we get some books? Behind that? <laughs> I, I guess one of the main reasons was um, I wanted to look at uh, weather extremes, and I've lived through a lot of those in my lifetime, and uh, they're becoming more frequent because of climate change. So, so this is you're, you're a mathematician by training. That's right. Um, well, I guess, do, do, you, do you work with meteorologists? Do you have training yourself? Or is it all just about the data and once you get into the right format, do you? Um, sort of a combination, I guess. So um, part of my work looks at like proving theoretical uh, laws. And then the other part looks at using those laws and real world data to make predictions. Amazing. Well, we're looking forward to you crunching the numbers tonight <laughs> for victory. Um, yes. Christina, yes. snakes. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'm ready. A little bit of parcel tongue going on there. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, why snakes? What are we? What are we? Are you interested in the the anti venoms for the snakes themselves? Are you looking at drug? What's your interest? Everything about snakes because I'm basically obsessed with them and have been my entire life ever since we had a huge two meter python as a pet. Well, uh, yeah, technically a boa constrictor. Yeah, so instead of a fluffy dog or a cuddly cat, it was a python and a Have uh, you ever been bitten by a snake? Well, yeah. Oh it's my god. Bound to happen when you extract venom from dozens and dozens of them and you know, you're millimeters from their fangs and part of my PhD was to work on snake venoms and how they affect our body and how well different anti venoms around the world work against those venoms. Do you do you talk to the snakes like, you know, <laughs> oh the good, just don't bite don't, or No, is it's it funny. I do, and for good reason, because we actually did a study published earlier this year where we proved that snakes behave differently according to the sounds that we play them. And that was totally new information. We knew they physically could hear some low frequency sounds, including our own voices, which are about 250 hertz. But um, yeah, they can actually, they'll change their behavior, and depending on the species, they might go toward the sound, away, and so everyone's wondering, okay, what do I do in the bush, for instance? <laughs> do I scream? Do I sing? Yeah, so people are really interested in that paper. Amazing. Um, cutting edge science right here. Last oh, so, of all, so Dan, tell us about Smart Enough to Know Better. Oh, this is the podcast that we're on. Is it the, that, that we you, do. That you <laughs> all yeah. run. Uh, well, we, we talk about all of the science, all, like all of it. It's mm. taken 12 years so far, and we've almost done it, but it keeps... <laughs> It keeps getting further away. <laughs> Keep making more. It's like delivering mail. There's always more science to talk about. And the problem is that all the low-hanging fruit are gone. Mm. Like, how do feet work? That's done. But suddenly it's like, chemistry? Now we have to start learning chemistry. Chemistry's really hard. <laughs> like, you can really do a mischief. <laughs> yeah. Kids, don't talk to Dan after the show. He's a bad <laughs> influence. <laughs> Um, and Dan, you and Greg, you've also got a bunch of other things on the go. You're part of the Act React Theatre Company. Yes. Um, you've got your show Speed, the movie, the play at Wynnum. Wynnum Fringe, yes. Coming up very soon, Wynnum Fringe. Speed, the movie, the play. Look for it immediately and buy all the tickets before <laughs> they run out. There's only 30 seats per bus. Seriously, you go on a bus. It's a real bus. It's a true... It, you're all staring at me like I'm mad, but it's true. <laughs> it's a real show. Fantastic reenactment of Speed. Um, huge round of applause for that team, and for all our contestants, let's get into it. <laughs> all right. So, our first game tonight is called Join the Dots. Our panellists need to connect the pictures to find out what are the five stories in this picture. So, you, your first row are a burnt scroll, a bubble of snot, a face in some toast, a uh, woolly mammoth, and the CEO of Qantas. No, sorry, <laughs> sorry, uh, a baby, it's a baby. Crying baby. And facing off against a pregnant woman, an X-ray, 
an adorable echidna, an even more adorable crocodile, <laughs> friends, and meatballs. So one picture from the top links up to one picture at the bottom of a story that was making headlines this year. Any ideas? You also have a screen in front of you um, if your necks stop working. Um, you've sort of been like, you know, get them back and forth. Okay, that also doesn't help. Cool. I was down there. Uh, but my neck has to break that way now instead of this way. It's part of our Briz Science exercise program. <laughs> and front and back. Any ideas on what was making headlines? Yes, sir. I see that there's Charles Darwin on the toast. And I, oh, from this angle, it looks like Charles Darwin. Yeah, um, you can sort of squint and almost see a face in that toast, couldn't you? Yep. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look like Charles I see there's meatballs, so this is just my guess. Have the flavor of toast and meatballs evolved together <laughs> over time? That is a fantastic link. But no, that's not it. <laughs> Could I try putting the snot together with the crocodile? Because I know that butterflies drink crocodile's tears. In fact, that's the first thing they started to drink, and then they moved on to flowers. Um, so maybe they've also drink snot? No, but you're, you're, sort of, you're, you're in the right sort of ballpark. Was it the croc ate the baby? Instead of the dingo <laughs> ate the baby. <laughs> Yes, Getting a little there? bit. Yeah, give me a little bit more. Why? Um, how, how would a croc get to a baby? Like, how would they know the baby's there? Wait, a, a baby, a human baby, or a crocodile baby? Because these are two different stories. <laughs> One is very Lots nurturing. Of croc stories always. <laughs> let's go for because it's bridge science. Let's go for the dark and horrifying one. <laughs> I, oh my god! So a crocodile ate. Oh, crocodiles like to eat babies when they're sick, but not when they're well. Uh, yeah, how, how do they do the experiment? <laughs> how, how, do the crocodiles, how do the crocodiles know where the babies are? Oh, uh, temperature? Uh, smell. The, no, keep going. Uh, they read. Crocodiles Move, can movement. read. Sound. Let's see. Crying. Let's see. Crying babies are they right? Crocodiles. They've got it, Whoa. yes! Yay. Yes. yes. It turns out that crocodiles are especially attuned to the sound of crying babies. Uh, My mother is a crocodile. Everyone hold on your baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, so we're not supposed to cry at them, but we're not supposed to smile at them either. No, either. They'll never know we're confident on Zoom anymore. <laughs> One down, let's, let's add a point over there. Great job. Um, who's next? I, I, want to try, I want to try the mastodon. And no, Dan, I'm not joining Mastodon. Stop asking. <laughs> I've given up on X slash Twitter, Blue Sky. I'm not joining Mastodon. Sorry. This is just a thing between us. You don't need to hear any of this. Um, but the Mastodon... You need an anti-social network. <laughs> it's, it's my personality. Right. The, the Mastodon, is it, is it about they're trying to grow baby Mastodons, not in humans, but in, in elephants, by, so basically bringing them back to life by growing them inside living elephant ladies. <laughs> you, you, are, you are absolutely on the right track. <laughs> what are you saying the Mastodon goes with? Uh, the, 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 the large fat lady. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. I did not say a bad... That's not... I didn't say it was a negative thing. You're, you all thought it was a negative thing. <laughs> Shame on you. Stop fat shaming people. You can find Dan in the car park after the show. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Greg, it's Greg. I just threw you under the bus. Yes, no, go for Dan. Yeah. Um, uh, you're on the right track, oh. but it is not oh. a pregnant lady. Is it, um, are, they t are they growing Mastodon meat to put into meatballs so that we can eat extinct mm. animals? Oh, let's yeah, see. Maybe? From the lab. Oh. They oh. are! Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Researchers across the world, including right here at UQ, have recreated mammoth meat from recovered DNA and then eaten it. Actually, they didn't eat it because workplace health and safety, but they did turn it into meatballs, a giant meatball. Uh, the links that grad students go to for a free meal. Uh, this is just the beginning, of course. They are moving on to regrowing ancient, extinct, giant pigs, which will be marketed in supermarkets as Jurassic pork. <laughs> it's my best joke of the night. Um, 
All right. I, I like it very much. Thank you, thank you. Have another point, Dan. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, where else? Where else are we going? Oh, wait, wait, I was thinking the the snotty kid with yep. the pregnant lady. No. No. <gasps> no. 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 Okay. Well, then with the x-rays, but, you know, that's sort of boring. With what, sorry? With the x-ray. With the x-ray? Also, no. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to try a third? The point of with the echidna. She's got... For a bonus point, why does it go with echidna? The same virus infects the, the snotty kid and the echidna. No. Oh. I think it's because uh, it's, uh, children nowadays are too soft uh, with their four-ply tissues, and so therefore they're saying you've got to put echidnas now to wipe their face with echidnas <laughs> so they grow up to be strong members of society. <laughs> Look, far be it from me to once again turn to the other team <laughs> just in case... <laughs> do, does it have anything to do with how long an echidna's nose is? Like, they, they would be snot repositories. They'd be like a super soaker. Look, you, again, you're on the right track. Echidnas do use this snot for a very functional purpose. Oh, uh, is, it, is it like a musk? Is it, is it to attract, attract no. a mate? Is it no. To, no. Is it to, to eat? Sorry? To eat? Not to eat. That's a zero-sum game. To, maybe it's <laughs> to... <laughs> is it to draw their mate? No. By snotting? No. It's actually... Oh. Um, is it a hunting mechanism? The bubbles. They can blow bubbles oh. from their nose. They can blow bubbles. And, and why Isn't do they that attractive as, as an echidna? <laughs> <laughs> if only if you're an echidna. Can they... Does it oh, does I they wouldn't catch, judge do, either way, Christina. Whatever. Them coming, can they right? attract... A, a, uh, not attract. Can they trap ants in it? Or prey? Can they attract... Like a snot... Snot <laughs> web. Like, like a really gross <laughs> Spider-Man. <laughs> Maybe the pheromones do, are filling they, in the bubble, and then when the bubble explodes, the pheromones go further to find the man. Do they pretend to be sick to, so that things won't go near them? <laughs> or they I can take am a day increasingly off work. doing that as a, you know, now that COVID's over, like, uh, <laughs> uh, no, you know, you, you've all, these are all brilliant ideas, oh. great PhD projects. Um, but I think I might just give you the point, and uh, because you are right, it is with the echidna, be it by process of elimination. Let's just check. Yes. Uh, it is, in fact, that echidnas don't sweat. And so we've now discovered they blow snot bubbles and do um, belly flops to cool down in the summer. <sighs> That's a half good Half a one. point for the snot bubbles? Look, I have half a point for the yeah. snot bubbles. <laughs> have we tried making the echidnas really nervous? Or... What's that? Sorry? Have we tried making them nervous? How do we know they don't sweat for sure? What? <laughs> you can't argue with the logic, it's half a point. <laughs> um, yes, our accounting is done by PwC tonight, so we're <laughs> taking some liberties. Um, so, is, are there... Uh, I want to try matching up the X-ray with the scroll. Is there a really old X-ray that was found? No. <laughs> um, not, not, not exactly, no. It's a modern X-ray machine. But, uh, and that's a scroll? It like, is. What's it made of? Like the parchment? Scroll? Yeah, sure, parchment. It, was, it for, was it predicted in the Bible? <laughs> like, specifically, this scroll was predicted in, like, under, you know, First Timothy, and the burnt scroll should be on Briz Science in... <laughs> no, 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 the, the, the x-rays. Oh. The, the, and, and the Lord saw through using wavelengths that man could not see. And then there was very powerful light. Um, no, it's And not there was slightly more chance of cancer because <laughs> that was his way. <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it that the scrolls, the best scrolls of whatever civilization were made from pregnant women? I us. thought we were really heading in a positive direction and then we just no, sorry, sorry. Away. I just thought they were like, look, you've got a lot... No, stop speaking. I've oh, got yeah. a long document to write today. I, yeah, okay, no. I mean, it, was, it would be such thin parchment. Like, it was stretched thin. Yeah. A little bit like this oh, segment, this really. this is a hole. Um, no, no. Were, was Please the, save it. <laughs> was the scroll the first evidence of us understanding X-ray technology? Like, <laughs> did we have, like, imprints of our bones historically on the scroll, and that's how we developed X-ray? I love the idea. Wrong? No. <laughs> 
It's, it's, it's a scroll that we, have, we discovered a while, um, but there's recently been some scientific advances involving an X-ray machine. They discovered that someone cheated on, like they, they wrote IOU two oxen, they rubbed out one, two oxen and put one oxen, and then they were like, it's like it was fraud from a thousand years ago, two thousand years ago, seven thousand years ago. Well, I'll give you a hint, we don't actually know yet. Um, so hang on, you've brought, what you're saying is you don't know the answer to the question that you're asking us. <laughs> Are you hoping that we come up with it and that we all... I, I feel like you're reading more into what I just said oh, okay, there. Fair <laughs> no, um, I, I, I'm going to, last, last chance or I'm going to reveal it. It okay. is, it does indeed, the scroll goes with the x-ray. Uh, it is a burnt scroll from Vesuvius that we have never read. And we have now, through a combination of x-ray and AI, started x-raying the scroll layer by layer, reading the ink, and for the first time reading this scroll. Again, nothing from science fiction. After everything that's happened, we decide we're just going to read the ancient creepy scroll that someone burnt for a reason. <laughs> um, and where was this from? At Vesuvius. Where the, where the volcano went off. Hmm. So does, this, does, it, does it actually say, oh God, oh, I'm burning, I'm burning, oh, the volcano's exploding. Ah, ah, ah. Please x-ray me. Um, well, we don't know. We've only recovered a few words so far. Um, the very first, this AI sort of managed to piece together how to interpret these AI, uh, these X-ray um, multi-slice images. So uh, watch this space, or possibly for Cthulhu. Um, um, I just want to say, I just want to say, I think it's going to be uh, the the toast of uh, Charles Darwin and the pregnant lady. Let's see, <laughs> is he right? He's got it. Yes. Have a him. point. Technically correct, the best sort of correct. Thank you very much. Yes. Can I, can I guess why? Please. <laughs> Someone got pregnant, had a baby, toast to that. <laughs> <laughs> this, this answer is proof that evolution may be not working. <laughs> no, it's not. Um, anybody have any idea? This is actually um, a research right here at UQ that discovers that new mothers are particularly uh, prone to pareidolia, seeing faces in images, like people who see pictures in their toast. Um, they are more likely to see faces when presented with images um, than other people, which is thought to possibly be part of a social bonding, making them very receptive to faces and making sure that even the ugliest babies don't get left for the crocodiles. <laughs> <laughs> And on that note, we've got three and a half points here, followed closely by two and a half points here. Give a round of applause. <laughs> All right. Our next round is called Serenade Me. In this round, in this round, one person from each team is going to listen to a sound of science that was made in the last 12 months. They are then going to have to reproduce that sound for their teammates who then need to tell us what that sound is. Mm, it's like verbal Pictionary, only more traumatic. Um, who would like to go first? Who's, who's volunteering for this one? We've got Megan. Do you want to be first? Amazing. All right, here we go. A round of applause. I need to put those headphones on. All right, I'm going to give you your first question. Let's tell me if you can hear this. <laughs> yep, that's a yes. <laughs> so there's kind of two different sounds and then it will loop around. That's the whooping sign, the sound to exit when there's a fire. That we always hear at UQ like every single day. I know it all too well. It's not a... No. <laughs> still going there's a snake loose in the building. Please evacuate. I think you should get right up into that microphone there and here's one more. I just want to point out, as somebody who knows what this sound actually is, that is actually uncanny. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, any guesses? I is it a door opening? Well, do you want to go multiple choice? 
uh, can, because. Well, can we? Can we? Can we? Can, can we? Can we steal it? Can we? Can we? No. Oh. You must wait your no, turn. I'll, I'll let them go first, and you can have a crack after that. Fine. I'll is give it, you is some it a bird vocalization, like of a baby bird now, or something? Now, did you say there were two sounds? There are two different versions of the same sound. Oh, right. can we hear like <laughs> one and then a gap? That'd and be then a the great other? idea. Please. Oh, wow. Oh, all right. <laughs> so it really escalates there. <laughs> you are wasted in mathematics. I mean, you're probably brilliant in mathematics too, but... All right. at, the, at the moment, we're thinking avian, I think. Yeah. You're going okay, avian. Been, but but let's, fly, let's go to the multi-choice. Uh, all right, I'm going to give you four choice. choices to narrow it down. Yeah. Could it be... A historical door. <laughs> Wait, there we go. A historical door. Tiny rockets. A collapsing star. Or an adorable dolphin. Oh gosh, it's, it really does sound like a dolphin, doesn't it? Uh, it no, but we know what the audience favourite is. So it wouldn't be a star because it's. No, you, this is where Joel tries to space. trick us. Yeah, sound doesn't travel so in it's space. Not be but that. he's gonna. He, this will be his like clever little. He knows that I know that sound doesn't travel in space. But it's gonna be some sort of electromagnetic no. sound or something. He, he's trying to trick you, knowing that you know that he's gonna try to trick you, and so it probably isn't that. that that's what I'm going. Okay. Never challenge a Sicilian when sound is <laughs> they on know the each line. Other too well. <laughs> you just blew my mind. Go for the dolphin. <laughs> The creaking door, but the, there would have to be two doors. Or no. oh, you're or opening it slowly. And you can take your headphones really off now too fast? if you'd like to. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. Now, <laughs> now you said it was. <laughs> it could be rockets. Yeah. What could sort of tiny, rockets? Tiny rockets. Tiny rockets. All right. So why would? Hmm. I mean, I noticed that there's a lot of rockets up in the clouds. So it may be um, a type of uh, weather rocket. Like, because there they, they are ways of like dispersing particles in rain clouds to sort of get them to uh, to give them a nucleotide so that they create raindrops, and then it rains uh -huh. on you on the right bit. Um, so that's how. So possibly that's a, a better way than going up there in a velocipede machine or something and dropping bags of soot out the side. Um, and the sound is related how? Well, as a, like the. It would, because it, it's a tiny back. one, it'd be going, like, it'd be like that. Versus if you want big raindrops. Bigger yeah. rockets. Like, yeah. And then you just drop a couple of anvils in, and you just get like six big raindrops. I'm thinking not the rockets. Can, can I just get a sense whether we're sort of working towards an answer here, <laughs> or? Uh, let's, what do you think? What do you like? I, I like the dolphin option, because... We're starting to learn more and more about how smart animals are and how they communicate, and a lot of people in bioacoustics working in that space. So maybe they came out with, I don't know, some individualistic whistle that a baby will give to the mom in order for the mom to do something. Well, dolphins do them. name themselves whistles. Like dolphins all have their own whistle name. So yeah, all right, let's go with okay. dolphins. Maybe this is a You're going that, dolphins? Maybe that's the dolphin's name. Does this team want to make any competing bid? Oh yeah, yeah. Quote the Lego movie, Spaceship! Um, or just space. Just space. 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 So you're going with the There's star two space, space things up there. Space. And also spaceships sometimes have doors. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe dolphins, you know. But let's just see. Was it the adorable dolphin? It was! Oh. Give her a round of applause! Yay. Five oh. points! <laughs> yes. Yes. Dolphin mothers, exactly as Christina says, dolphin mothers talk to their babies just like human oh, mothers baby do. baby talk. Highly critically. Who is back there somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> yes, like humans talk in parentese to their babies, so too do dolphins. Normal dolphin squeaks sound, you've already heard it, just check out how accurate this is, like this. <laughs> oh my gosh. And then, when they talk to their baby calves, sound like this. <laughs> They're really excited. Boy, oh, yes! nice. In fact, that 
was so good, I am going to give you another point. Oh, yeah. Nine and a half, there we go. All right. Um, yes, uh, scientists don't fully understand the process, but it's thought to be part of bonding and building that connection. I mean, do you have any more, do you have any, do you have any insights from your snakes or otherwise? Oh, not so much snakes, not so many vocalizations going on there. But I know in other species, um, just a cool little tidbit about bird vocalizations, is that if people aren't aware that some bird species will vocalize to their young, but when they're in the egg stage, and the scientists originally thought, well, why would you be wasting your time talking to the egg? But it's because when the chick hatches, they speak a password. And it's a password that the parasitic birds who can't learn vocalizations don't know. So they won't feed the parasitic bird that's in there and instead feed their own. How cool is that? Super cool. Yeah. <laughs> Go birds. Just make stuff up. <laughs> I wouldn't know whether it's real or not, just, you know, take, take a crack. Like, passwords, that's amazing. Um, yes, at dolphin parents have been observed making a third, even higher sound when their dolphins come home with pierced fins. <laughs> All right, the other team, are you ready to have a crack? Um, Meshad, is it, you're, you're going to be able, oh no, sorry, okay. Here we go, let me get that for you there, pop that on. Have a listen to that. Oops. No. <laughs> we're, we're done. We're done. It's just more of the same. Let's take a moment to really soak that up. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I think the headphones are broken. Let me... Uh... <laughs> that, that's good, that's good. That is, that is definitely good. <laughs> have, have, give, give them a little bit more. I think they need... Do we need a little bit more? Yes, yes. <laughs> Um, do you feel like you've got enough to have a... Do you have any initial guesses? It's, I think it's the start of the theme song for Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> I think so too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can't tell us that. Then. All right. Um, do, you want, do you want to go multiple choice? Uh, do, do, any ideas? Any, any ideas? Any ideas? I think we're, 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 we're. I think I, think I got the... the, the, the um, I just need to get that right. microphone up into you. Oh, there. We're, 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 we're. Okay. Is it... Is it... Is it a moth? Some sort of moth. Sort of, no, I've got nothing. Well, <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good guess. Let me, let me give you some options, <laughs> sort of narrow it down for you. Could it be, mm. let me switch my car that has it, could it be a mind-reading computer, a lip-syncing whale, <laughs> an alien message, or tectonic plates? Ooh. Mmm. Now, that, does my sound make more sense now with, when you have these? Yeah. yeah I think so. I think so. <laughs> no, definitely <I> Malus. <laughs> I need some support. You're, you're welcome if you want another, another listen now with those in mind, and if you want to have one more. Like, no, well. thank you. Okay. <laughs> I, well, it's, it's good to know, Malus, all your years of training and careful study oh, has boy. brought you to being up on stage. You know, I know, I know. I, I'll tell my choir director tomorrow night that, that this is this was my solo piece. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what are you thinking? Any ideas? Because I'm lost. No, um, it's never aliens, so it's not that one. Okay, forget that. Sorry, hate to say it. I really wish it was. Well, well uh, as far as you're aware, and um, mind reading head. No, stop it. Just stop it. Just stop making a fool of yourself and us. That's a silly. Unless it's right, and then I was wrong. But, <laughs> so I think this leads to a lip-syncing whale or tectonic plates. And what are the chances he would pick two cetacean sounds? Would he do that? Look at this man. Would this man pick two <laughs> cetacean sounds, audience? 
this sort of man who would pick a, a big old whale and a little old whale? No. This is a man who doesn't know much about cetaceans. Also, I, like, I hate to step on anyone here, but lip syncing makes no sound. <laughs> That's a very good point. <laughs> you caught him out. Dan is helping us. So, how do you feel? Uh, I think I think tectonic plates because again, uh, who's saying view 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 to a to a whale? Oh, it's a baby whale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so the team, I believe we're we're going with tectonic plates. Okay, so so and you won't mind if you're wrong. <laughs> I'm not saying you are, I'm just saying, them to the answer, you know, are we? If, if you plug this into a computer and you happen to get the wrong answer, that's not something you would mind. You would be okay with that. We oh. don't mind. <laughs> you know, you're not oh. reading anything from me here, so that's fine. I, <laughs> should we, I, should I don't, we I don't trust aliens? him. I don't trust him. It's the beard. No, the... He's got a master's beard from Doctor Who. Anyway, it's a problem. It's my issue. But it's, it's a lovely beard. I'm sorry. But it's... Okay, wh wh where are you thinking, Meshad? Uh, I don't think it'll be aliens because what are the chances I'm hearing about it here? Mm. Um, so I, I it, don't think it's mind-reading machine because uh, it would know that I would not know the answer. That's true. <laughs> He's giving us a lot of he help, but I don't trust him. And I think we should stay not trusting him, even though I think he's really I, trying to help us. I think we, just like the tectonic plates, we shouldn't shift from our Oh, answer. very good. Oh. <laughs> nice. All right, so you're going with tectonic We're plates? We're staying with tectonic plates. Do, All right. Do we get a counter? No. <laughs> if you were getting counter, what would you say? Aliens. It's going to be aliens. You're going with aliens. Yeah. All right, let's see. What was it? It was... The Duh. mind reading computer! Oh. Who knew? Give a round of applause. One point for the good pun on the end there from Mersha. Oh, All right. We won the moral victory. And, and another point for an incredible impersonation that we're going to hear in a moment. So let's, let's add that up. There we go. Um, yes, this was in fact a mind reading computer. Scientists have reconstructed the music that a brain is listening to by using electrodes implanted in the brain from patients who were undergoing therapy for epilepsy. By reproducing the, by measuring those internal brain waves, they were able to reproduce the music. Here is the original song. On our words, just in brick in the wall. That was not what you heard, just no. to be clear. A <laughs> uh, bit of Pink Floyd there. This is what the computer can hear. Which, having listened to that, that was actually pretty amazing. <laughs> Give a huge round of applause to Mullins there. Because you did hit the wah, wah, wah. You hit that very distinctive sound that comes from these electrodes. So that was actually amazing. We gave you a really hard one. Um, the long-term goal of this work is, of course, to be able to help patients who have limited mobility communicate directly with computers. Uh, it's only based on 16 electrodes, so a limited sample, and hence why the sound is somewhat muted. It also works with a smaller number of electrodes, but then you have to use something like Britney Spears, <laughs> which sounds exactly the same as normal. Um, so at the end of that round, this team has jumped ahead to 10 points. This team is close behind on seven points, but it's anybody's game. Give a big round of applause! All right. Oh, no, 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 stop. Okay. Our next game, this is a fun one. This game is Guess Whom. We're going to bring up a very special guest, and it's up to our team to figure out who this person is, but more importantly, what work did they do recently that made the news? Please put your hand for our special guest, Robbie. Where's Robbie? There he is. Now, Robbie, would you like to come up on stage here? Uh, maybe come up the back there. Uh, don't fall off the back of the stage. We lose a lot of academics that way. <laughs> All right. Now, 
This is a very simple game. Our teams get to ask Robbie questions and he will only answer yes or no. Uh, if you need you know, some nuance, we can confer and sort it out. Um, if you get a yes, you get to ask another question. If you get a no, it's over to the other team. Faster you get the answer, the Why do you look at us when you said that? I don't <laughs> Oh, that's really cruel. That's not. Yeah, that's me. Um, and uh, faster, f the faster you get there, the more points you get. Now, it has turned out that Christina is familiar with Robbie. Yes, unfortunately, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I sure she didn't. This mean man it. is our <laughs> guest. <laughs> Only yes or no. He can take it. Only can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, you're limited. Yes or no here. You're right. Um, so, Christina will not be able to um, help out her team in terms of narrowing down Robbie's special, uh, Robbie's broad area, but you might be able to jump in if we need to narrow down his specific paper, um, research project that got the attention. So, let's start uh, giving that good bit of advantage here. Let's start over here. What question would you like to ask first? Or we could... Do you work in uh, biological sciences? Okay, can I ask yep. another question? Yes. Ooh. Yep, he, he does work in biological sciences. Do you work with reptiles? Do you work with reptiles? Yes. Yes, works with reptiles? That's all the answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, give you a, I'll give you a hand held, held there mm -hmm. as well, then you can be directly... Thank you. Might just take Do you work only with reptiles? No. Ah, ah oh. good question. We'll throw it to the other side. Uh, do you work with the... Specifically with the front part of <laughs> reptiles <laughs> as opposed to the back part of them? No. <laughs> All right. All right. I, so he's either the back part or the whole thing. We well, know Greg's uh, well, Dan's next question. There. Do you just work with all types of animals? Yes. Hmm. Are you trying to see, are you trying to translate anything from reptiles to humans <laughs> or therapy? No. Not a Spider-Man villain, good mm. to know. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> I thought that's why he had his arm behind his back. Good idea. So. Thank you. I appreciate it. Any questions over here? Do you work with eggs? Yes. Yeah, what's what does that work with? Eggs. 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 Um, d uh, do, have you ever killed an animal as a part of your <laughs> research? <laughs> My oh, client does not need to answer that one. <laughs> I think he does, either in the affirmative or the negative. <laughs> Are there mosquitoes in your life? <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is getting dark. <laughs> uh, did, did it like result it? in some oh, really interesting results? Yes. Oh, I'm going to make you sound like a psycho. <laughs> <laughs> did you? you were you happy? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a promotion. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, one more question over here, and we'll throw it back over. I'm sorry, I'm terrified right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll pre Not that I'm going to be able to do anything. Look at him. <laughs> do you work with babies? Baby animals? Yes. This just gets okay. better and better. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna we're gonna spare Dan the next question. How about over this side? Any any? Are you on a list we should know about? <laughs> <laughs> no, Duh. not that you need to know. But have another one anyway. My Go on. My says no. <laughs> uh, is your research in the domain of conservation? Yes. Mm. This is gonna be a fun one. Keep going. Uh, are you, I'm just gonna take a shot. Please. Um, are you trying to work out? how to artificially hatch uh, endangered reptiles? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great crack. Uh, does your work uh, relate to uh, invasive species? Yes. <laughs> oh, he's actually a good guy after all. <laughs> uh, do you hate Indian minor birds? <laughs> Just hate them. Just hate them. <laughs> no. Just want to. Oh. Do you uh, bring in species from other places to wipe out the species that are already here that shouldn't be here? 
No. Duh. <laughs> I, I will point out, we haven't got an awful lot closer to the answer no. in the past sort of 20 or 30 questions. Um, yeah, feel free to jump in at any point, Christina. <laughs> um, do you work on anything related to athletics or physiology of the animals you study? Yes. That is your hint. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll open the floor to anyone. It, who do you work with uh, uh, and like uh, giving human humans uh, some sort of abilities of animals? So like run like a cheetah, lift a box like a gorilla, with a machine, some sort of like we can rebuild say him. Yes to that one. You can say yes. <laughs> I'm a little bit surprised. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I want to start a superhero company with you right now. Um, we, all right. Uh, Does Oh, so Wait, he said yes. yes. What is so, yeah. no, you're right. Please help me. <laughs> Are you genetically mo um, modifying tissues to make animals do things that they can't do? No. Mm. Oh. You, you. You're probably veering the right way with those human-y questions. Does this relate to medicine and medical? No. No, all right. Good narrowing down. Invasive species, uh, <laughs> working on invasive species, but also, or, or not. <laughs> Are we on the right track with invasive species? Oh, that's a I mean, question. on a technicality, yes, I guess. Oh, okay, right. But but so, so we, 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 the person who knows Robbie yes. had this sort of hint about physiology-related yes. stuff. Yeah, animal, yeah. I don't know whether it's worth like following that hint a little bit is it further. About, <laughs> is it about... <laughs> is it about, like, pigs' bits that go into human hearts and that sort of stuff, or...? Yes. Ah, yes! No, it's not. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Robbie, everybody! <laughs> I can't help but feel that that would come under medicine. <laughs> <laughs> have you well, seen Arla, Dr. Arla Moreau? Not, not always medicine, it can just be... Every question I have now, it sounds like a superhero. Like... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> could, is the res is, is, could the result of this end up in a human being that is somehow better than a human being could otherwise be? Yes. Are you... Combining humans with bats to create Man Bat from the Batman comics. <laughs> no. Is that no or not yet? <laughs> okay, well, there's, there's oh, a whole duh. pattern of superheroes to go through. <laughs> we just need to start narrowing this in. So, it's something about giving humans new abilities, physiology related. Is it about. Is, is it about bringing. DNA from animals into humans? No. Duh. Is it about attaching animal bits to humans? <laughs> no. How else could you help a human if not DNA or okay. um, bits, attaching bits, animal bits? Is there anything, any other techniques? Is it, is it um, for burn? Uh, do you work on um, people with terrible oh. burns? Maybe it's Ooh. microbiome. It may be, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, could these animals be considered a familiar? <laughs> I'm going to go with no. I don't know. Like a guide dog. <laughs> no. Oh, I see that. No. No. Okay. No. Feel free to jump in because at this point I'll take anything. Yes. <laughs> I'm not sure I exactly know just what he does, <laughs> actually, vaguely. I don't um, think anyone knows. I think the okay, ethics department really want to find out very quickly what's going <laughs> on. This is getting real weird. What university again? No, I don't know. So does your, does your work try to study invasive species and how well they do so that we can help humans in their athletic abilities and something to do with the age of them and, and something to do with soccer, I think you studied once? Is that all together? Like... How did she come up with this? <laughs> <laughs> I also like, want to point like out if you're, if you're older. Yes. Right. Oh, see? Look at that. I just want to point out if I'm ever I stuck in one of the... I don't know what he said yes to. <laughs> <laughs> it was a roundabout older. way. You're like you're asking a labyrinth guard. If I were to ask you, <laughs> does Robbie, what would he... <laughs> so there's a bunch of things in there. Do you want to say, hit some of them again? We'll get some specific yes or no's. Yeah. So learning from an invasive species. Yeah. 
Okay, and they're super fit. They do typically really well. And yep. so how can we learn from that to improve athletic abilities of maybe younger kids? Mm. Older individuals or, or, r relative yes. to their age range in that year? There was one more bit in what you said about before. About soccer. <laughs> yes. There was something about soccer in there. I remember that oh. vaguely. vaguely. Okay, we're you narrowing in. I can almost want, feel. You want uh, Lionel Messi to play forever. I'm trying. <laughs> Did you work on the 80s TV show Manimal, where the man took on, this is a real thing, the, where, the, where the detective gained the abilities of animals and transform into them, and therefore you're trying to bring it into the modern age? Yes. Yes! No. Ah. <laughs> I feel like I I've lost control then. of the show just a little bit up here right now. Now we're just pitching TV shows. It's great. All right, so we've narrowed it down to ha something about... Ha have we? <laughs> you have an interesting, a very broad uh, definition of narrow, so... Work with me, Greg! <laughs> Give me something! We've narrowed it down. He's, he's, he's studying physiology, something about soccer. It, does it have and to age, do with... Age was in there. Yes. Does it have to do with the clothing, like the apparel of the soccer players? No. Okay. Is it, uh, are you doing the Australian version of Air Bud, but with a kangaroo and soccer? <laughs> Instead of a dog and, and, and basketball. Yes. <laughs> no. Duh. Robbie's just taking notes like my research grant this year is going to be a cracker. Like, are, are how these, does, how are does these someone get a grant where they can make an athlete better than a human being could be by killing animals? This short, I, I, this is so hard. You can learn hard. a lot from killing animals, actually. You're not putting, bl you're not putting animal oh. blood into them to make them Is it, is it shoes? Is it based on shoes? No. Duh. You know, uh, are, these, yes. are these invasive species, are the older indiv uh, individuals in this species much better at motor function? The, the invasive species, yes. Yeah. They are. And so you're using that to see how we can be more agile as we progress further in age? Uh, you've got some truth to that. Yes. Are, we, are you <laughs> being very cunning here and saying, like, uh, uh, is, is the greatest game of all, like, man? Are you are saying, invasive species, it's humans! And therefore, you're just in bringing people to play soccer. I don't know. There is some truth in that, too. Uh, yeah. Okay. I feel like Megan's miss, missing a chance here to really seize the day. There's, okay. Some, okay. there's some overlap here. There's some overlap. Mm. Okay. Oh, that can hurt. Um, are you using, mm. like... <laughs> yes, so far. Are you, <laughs> are you modeling the movement of yes, the yes. invasive species? Yes. And then teaching athletes to move in that way so that they are better at what they do? Oh, there's a lot of yeses in there. Ooh, yes. nice. Are you teaching soccer players how to flock? <laughs> <laughs> well, so they don't need lessons for that. Do you feel like they've narrowed it in, in here, pretty close? I reckon it's pretty oh, I think they've got it. Give them a round of applause! <laughs> I don't know what happened. I don't know what just happened there. Robbie, <laughs> would you like to tell us about your project and about, about what you do? Okay, <laughs> I feel like I need to sort of explain some of the yeses. <laughs> <laughs> so I work in the biological sciences school at UQ and my work is predominantly on um, wild animals and I study um, interactions between invasive predators and our prey, which are, are really not doing very well against predators. And a lot of the work that I do is modeling how they interact. So they're, they're predator prey models. And I study, it's just like sport, it's sport in nature. And so the same sort of model that I've been using with animals in nature, I've been applying to, uh, to model the optimal penalty shooting in soccer players. And so, in penalty, there is a predator and there's a prey, and the, the actions of both are associated with how they move their body. And so that's what we did. Oh. Give a huge round of applause for Robbie! Thank you so much for coming up. Great job. It's so obvious now. It all makes sense. <laughs> and I'm gonna give them two points each for that amazing team effort. <laughs> all right. Let's keep so pushing. I just, I just this image of, of, of him standing there watching his quokka and there's like a cat coming up going, yes, yes. 
Soon our soccer games will be 10% more efficient while the pocket just smiles. <laughs> uh, also, what would you call an invasive species playing soccer? Lion Messi. Aww. <laughs> I am a point? sucker for, yeah, you get a point for that mission. <laughs> You're just slowly climbing, closing that gap. I love it. All right, our next game is called What Could Possibly Go Wrong? <laughs> which I feel kind of scared about after, after that scene, but let's see how we go. All right, Dan, Christina, Megan, here is your first question. Where are we here? Elections are an important part of our society, but this year something went wrong in an overlap of technology and democracy. Was it A, a major European political party elected the wrong leader after they misused an Excel spreadsheet to tally the votes? Was it B, Eurovision semi-final votes for Australia were briefly counted towards Austria because both countries were abbreviated the same way? Or was it C, an electoral roll in Texas was lost <laughs> when an intern unknowingly overwrote the single 187 my megabyte doc file containing all voter records? Geez, they all seem very plausible. <laughs> <laughs> and I would know I'm from Texas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's a bit. I also just love the sentence, misused the Excel file. <laughs> right, right, is there any other way to use Excel? <laughs> all the academics are like, oh, I got scars. You tell your stories. Where are you thinking here, team? Christina, where is your head at? Well, I can certainly agree that the first one would be very common across the whole world, I imagine. Who doesn't have complaints about Excel? Yeah, in fact, I know some of the big crypto banks have been storing their information in Excel spreadsheets, and that's been coming up in the news. So I'm wondering whether you've but plucked that bit of information and slotted it into some other also, fiction. Everyone already knows about this problem, so maybe Surely that we've come past that stage and learned not to use Excel. So oh, my sweet summer child. <laughs> 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 hmm. Maybe it's another one. <laughs> and an electoral <laughs> roll in Texas, like no one is entering 187 me megabytes of data one line at a time in a Word document. You're going to have some way of putting that into a database. Oh, my sweet yes. summer child. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! I I, in, this, this is what and this is what interns do in the <laughs> science world, isn't it? And you just set some poor kid down and just go. I'll just type out a hundred million words. Dan, we don't call them interns; we call them PhD students. <laughs> right. <laughs> Imagine the lag of that word document. How can they even work with it? I mean, who knows Word? Very mm. slow. As soon as you go, Megan, challenge anything. What do you think? I don't think they. I think they'd use Excel for that. <laughs> so I'm probably, I'll probably I'm, go with A. I'm leaning to, towards Eurovision because yeah. those people do not seem to know how to organise things. I don't know sports. No, 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 no. Eurovision is politics. <laughs> <laughs> Eurovision is life. <laughs> uh, Eurovision, big music, because oh, I don't know music, so it's big, some big music thing where people wear fan funny clothes and sing. So do we, are we leaning in any direction or the other? I mean, surely it would be silly just to save four letters instead of, you know, you would write the whole country, wouldn't you? I, that would I, be a really silly mistake. I do need an answer. Sure, okay. They're all really silly mistakes. Where are you leaning towards? I'm sticking, I'm going A. Me too. Excel. Going A? The, okay, let's go A then. <laughs> All right, let's see. Was it A? Oh. Yes, they got it right! <laughs> well done, well done. <laughs> yes, the opposition party in Austria messed up an Excel spreadsheet tally, elected the wrong leader, and were immediately flooded on Twitter by offers to send them books on Excel for dummies. <laughs> 
the Australian Labor Party immediately announced that they had the same issue and that technically Bob Hawke was still leader. <laughs> and if we could please send a Ouija board, that would be better for everyone. <laughs> All right. Are you ready? Okay. Peer-reviewed journals, very important part of science, but uh, occasionally things slip through the editing process. This actually wasn't last year, it was a little, a little, a little bit longer ago, but um, what, what slipped through the gaps and made it into publication? Was it, A, written in small font, the authors are offered $100 <laughs> to any peer reviewer who actually responded on time? <laughs> By the way, you'll know now if you're sitting next to an academic because they're the ones who are like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Was it B, swear words were hidden in the equation section to prove that no one actually <laughs> reads that bit? Nice. Or was it C, a discussion between authors was left in the text, in particular a suggestion, should we cite the crappy Gabor paper here? <laughs> I'm going, to have to, I'm going to have to pass it over to my yeah, learned so. colleagues here, who have many more papers than I do. <laughs> which one do you think would have happened? I'm a little sweat. Well, well, are, are you saying which one I would have done? Uh, Is that what you were saying? I am making no alleged uh, uh, okay. anything uh, at this point. Okay. No. I think it can't be A, because how would you get finance to clear that? <laughs> I absolutely agree. Yes. Yes. And I, I think it's not B, it's because if no one read it, then we wouldn't know that, right? <laughs> C is too specific. Ah. Okay. Uh, he's, 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 he's making good decisions. <laughs> <laughs> so we're Malu, so you on the same page? Well, yeah, I... I or the I, same I, journal? <laughs> <laughs> Don't push it. We've <laughs> created a monster. <laughs> it's like feeding the, the, the birds, the, the, the bin, bin chickens, like... <laughs> rewarding the bad puns, <laughs> great. I would, l I would love the paper. I would love to review the, the one that of the, f the first one. I would love to get the hundred dollars. That would be great. <laughs> um, it hasn't happened yet, so, so I it. don't think yeah. that is the one. So I, I agree. I'm sort of s a little bit tempted for B, because who likes to type in equations in Word? So I think, you know, it could be B, but who knows? Okay, Melissa's going for B, Mayor Shot is making the case for C. Mm. I, I like B now, I mean, oh, I'm yeah. convinced. <laughs> I, said, I, I, do, I must admit, I do like the idea of just in your notes, you just go, oh, we have to cite that ludicrous paper because everyone, it'll, you know, it'll, it'll get, it. I can see that happening, but, it, but I, I, I want it to be B. I want it to be B, because I like the idea of just someone was like, I sweat over here for three years of my life writing this stupid paper that no one's going to read. I'm going to put a big old naughty word right here. Isn't that what Disney but does in all the, the movies? Change the E to a three right? so that spell check won't find it. Boom, done. Um, so we're going to go with B? Is that what we you are, want? We're going to go with B. You can't see B. any alternative to that? <laughs> <laughs> What's upsetting is he showed us four fingers at the same time, though. <laughs> That's getting real confusing. But, look, do we, but yeah. now it's a double block, because I didn't believe him before, and now he's saying C, but maybe he's just trying to trick us again. I, I didn't say yeah, anything. I, I didn't say anything. Like, I still like you've got it. three very good options. It could be the first one, the second one, or the third one. <laughs> <laughs> See, but the, the, th the third one, I think people, that, yes, that has definitely happened. Well, it's probably way. happened more than one time. I will bow to the professor here, and we're going to pick C. C. And that's your C. fault. I, I, just, I want you to be sure. Hey, yeah. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> you're going C. We're going C. Let's see. Do they have it right? They got oh. it. Yes. <laughs> so many mind games. Yes, uh, it was. Here it is. The authors left a note, should we cite the crappy Gabor paper here? Awkward. Uh, it was eventually picked up and edited out, and the way they did that was to add the reference to make sure <laughs> there was no doubt about which of Gabor's crappy papers they were talking about. But it was economics, so it doesn't yeah, really yeah, matter it anyway. It wasn't real science, it's that's fine. That was exactly what I was going to say. 
Oh, wow, no one came to me. I, thought I, could, I, thought, pardon me. I was going to say the same thing. Oh, That's yes. economics, right? Yeah. They don't even get a Nobel no, Prize. Not, <laughs> We're having our own little party here. <laughs> are, are you, are you, <laughs> Nobody gets Greg, you, keep saying, you keep saying economics, don't you? Sorry? You keep saying e economics? Economicsociology.org? Oh. Uh -oh. No, no, actually, that was the, uh, that was the website that um, provided these convenient screenshots before the end of the paper. It's actually a biology journal. But That's also sad. not real science, so. <laughs> <laughs> I actually want to read that paper now to see if it was really crappy. Right. I, You've I all got some homework. <laughs> I want to peer review the thing that they let in, which is if it was a crappy paper. I want to yeah. know that. Yeah. I, it, it's, it's a classic. Page three. Whoop, it's good. All right. One more of these. Time grows short. Let's get a quick one on here. Um, 2023. Massive year for artificial intelligence. Chat GPT image creation has stormed the world. But not everything went right. This is for both teams. What went wrong? Was it A, Google shares dropped $100 billion after its new AI made a factual error in its first demo video? Was it B, a supermarket AI cooking app recommended a recipe for aromatic water mix <laughs> that was actually deadly chlorine <laughs> gas? <laughs> Or was it C, New York lawyers were fined after they submitted a court filing containing fake cases and quotes made up by ChatGPT? Oh. It's gotta go C. I reckon it's C. Well, the audience wants to get in on this one. Can we throw it to the audience and let them get a mark and get a score? They may beat us, but that's fine. If you I, want to give them your points, that's fine. Like, th they all have to agree, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, who thinks A? Few brave souls. Who thinks, oh, more A. Who thinks B? Who thinks C? Oh. Holy moly! So what are you going to go for? Yeah, definitely C. What are you going to go for? Definitely C. Let's see. What was the answer? The answer was oh. A. Oh. No. Was and it? B. It's <laughs> all of them. And <laughs> C. Oh. Yes. Yes. They were all true. In particular, an AI cooking app recommended, amongst other things, a, that tipped off people this might not be quite right. Horrifying recipes such as a fresh breath mocktail made with bleach, <laughs> and poison sandwiches, and raspberry vodka. Horrifying. Was the it sounds like, sounds like something that Robbie would be working on. <laughs> yeah. All maybe, right. Maybe don't uh, buy any books about mushrooms either that's published <laughs> yeah. after 2022 because there's been a couple of instances where the wrong mushroom was said to be a nice edible mushroom. Yeah. Thanks to the most amazing tool for lies ever created. <laughs> <laughs> you probably have to be more specific about that tool. <laughs> yeah. The internet. The internet. <laughs> I thought Dan was talking about our podcast for a moment then. <laughs> All right. It's time for our next game. This is a big one. This is called Keynote Presentation. This is a big one. Um, in this note, one of each... One of, in this game. In this game, one member from each team has been invited to present at a major scientific conference. This one. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately... Unfortunately, they only just got notified, they don't know what their topic is, and the AV equipment is broken, so they have to do their presentation in mime. <laughs> we have here a series of potential stories. Greg, oh, great. would you like to draw one? Come out the front here. Uh, thank you, finally, finally. I get known for my genius in the field of, which I won't say the word. Yes. In the field of this. <laughs> okay, okay, great. Uh, give me a sec here. Okay, um, teammates, cover your eyes, cover your eyes. I'm going to put it up on the screen so that all you can see. Okay, here we go. <laughs> all right, uh, you've got it. Great. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to hide the screen. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, no, that's a good idea. You're going to need it. I'm going to black out again. Yeah. <laughs> Wake up and go, oh, I'm still here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that's, oh, yeah, here. Great. Fair. <laughs> 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 
Birds? Bird? Birds or Chick angels? Chicken? <laughs> I still think Butterflies? angels. <laughs> uh, bee? Uh, 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 bee catcher? A firefly? Very specific. <laughs> a, a, a butterfly? No? <laughs> oh, frog. <laughs> no? <laughs> An insect. Fly. <laughs> A dead fly. <laughs> I don't want to guess out loud. <laughs> a, f a fly that's having an affair? Oh, oh, oh. He's getting fat. He's pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> fly, fly larvae? Fly <laughs> larvae. Okay, fly larvae. <laughs> I'll point out this is a lot easier if you know what the answer is. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, do, you, do you have any thoughts so far? Pe some, something about somebody killing flies and some, somebody not killing flies. I know. <laughs> I, I get the pregnant fly and the fly larvae, but then. But then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's let's log that in. Yeah. Just remember, this is a family show. <laughs> right, so it's not, it's not my fly love it, right? <laughs> Right, right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> is, is it about how fly mothers identify the fly larvae as theirs versus not someone else's? What? No? Okay. How, how could you be really sure this was your larvae? No, actually, that still doesn't make sense, does it? <laughs> I'll stop helping. Oh. <laughs> you look like a baseball umpire. <laughs> Oh, right. Is it... I, I hate to guess this, but is this about a fly deciding to be the one that will lay the progeny for the colony? Is, it, is, that, is that the right space? It's the queen. Oh, is that... It's, it's virgin, 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 virgin oh. flies. I don't, I don't feel too bad about not getting the Christian reference, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, scientists have identified the gene in flies that allows for virgin birth, parthenogenesis. Otherwise known as... <laughs> <laughs> Greg has coined a new term for the modern era. Um, when inserted into a regular fly, the females will self-reproduce as long as they don't meet a male by middle age. Uh, scientists are concerned that if the mutation occurs naturally, flies could reproduce at a much faster rate in the wild. Even worse, 
Now that scientists have successfully created a virgin birth, they have to wait till Easter to make sure the flies aren't going to resurrect. <laughs> All right, Dan, are you ready? Yes, indeed. All right. Come on out, get a round of applause here. <laughs> cover your eyes, teammates, cover your eyes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I hate that noise he makes. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like you got everything you need there, Dan? <laughs> All right, teammates, the game is afoot. <laughs> just off of flies. Yeah, just just off of flies. A fly. <laughs> oh, um, a, f a fish, a, tail a fin. Feather? Uh, uh, a bee. <laughs> oh, nice. Well done. Not smart bee. Um, not a strong bee. <laughs> um, stuck? Frustrated bee. Uh. Uh, super strong bee. St bee on steroids. Uh, whacking. Uh, building. Bees. Building bee? Uh, oh, working bee. Uh, no. Hammer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hammer throwing hammer. Throwing contest. <laughs> Thor. Crashing down. Lightning. Thor. Okay. Uh, oh. Bee. Thor bee. <laughs> <laughs> bee with the power of Thor. <laughs> oh, that's terrifying. Yeah. This is actually. So extra, extra powers. Nice. All right, B can shoot lightning. <laughs> Angry bees. Lightning bee. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm on lightning it. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um. Honey, something to do with honey. No, okay. No. Straight jacket. <laughs> <laughs> bee can't move. Bee's eating. He's bees. got no arms. Um, worm. Oh. Okay. Nice. <laughs> okay. Okay. Looking, swimming. Um, uh, spitting, oh, is spitting, he, is something? he drowning? No. <laughs> <laughs> Creating a looking for cocoon? the light. A light, no. Mm. Okay, B. No, no. No more bees. <laughs> okay, we're back to the worm. Okay. The worm. Worms trying to. The fly. worm wants to be a bee. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna turn into a cocoon. <laughs> Trans. <laughs> it's. Transferring genes between the angry bees to the thirsty worms? <laughs> no. Okay. You got that. <laughs> uh, oh. Okay. <laughs> the worm. <laughs> Social worm. No. <laughs> okay. She she's gonna do the worm. And he's the mother bee shooting lightning. Oh, they're attracted. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, so um, teaching. Okay. Teaching. No. Mimicking. No. Bee uses lightning to attract worm baby. 
Uh, I think that's close enough. I'm going to give it to him. Can I catch round of applause? Yay! Idea. Don't fall off the edge. We lose a lot of children down the back. <laughs> and one more round of applause for Dan yes. Faston! <laughs> yes, bees leap into the air. <laughs> bees leap in there. Bees build up a static electricity charge as they fly, allowing small worms to use the electric field to leap into the air and hitch a ride on the bee. Oh, God. Do you want to see it? Here we go. This is good. This is good. If I can just get this to play. Here we go. Wait for it. There's the worm. Whoa. Sometimes the worms do it in a group. Do you want to see his... his uh, Oh, that's the first one again. Oh, there it goes, look. Oh, wow. <laughs> Doing it in a group. Um, scientists don't know entirely why this happens, but it might be a way of um, propagating and exploring new areas. Uh, the scientists did originally do this experiment by charging up the bumblebees by rubbing them on a native plant and holding them near the worms. In the second experiment, they anaesthetized the bees first, and that worked much better. <laughs> so... That team, five points. That team, five points. <laughs> and that brings us to the end of our evening and time to tally the scores. And after a hard-won fight with many a pun and many a ring-in performers, this team scored a very respectable number in their prime, 17 points. <laughs> but narrowly, oh so narrowly, were they beaten by the team over here on 22 points. <laughs> Our winners tonight. <laughs> and that brings us to the end of a show. So can you please give me a huge round of applause for all of our performers tonight. And join me in thanking Megan Carney, Christina Zipnick, Dan Beeston, Greg Wah, Mayor Shadwadia, and Associate Professor Mawal Stick and Nick Dirks. Big thank you to Robbie, our special guest. I've been your host, Dr. Joel Gilmore, and we will see you all back next year for more Brit science, comedy, and more. Have a fantastic evening and see you all soon.